Sennheiser's HD range of headphones has got a deep heritage with classics like the HD 600, the 650 and the HD 800S. Now, today we're looking at the newest member, and this is the HD 400 Pro. It's open back, but will it be a ideal bargain for a mix headphone? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to stick with us. Physically, the HD 400 Pro is fairly similar to the sort of HD 600, 650 type shape. There's a bit more plastic in the build, um, but it's lightweight, it's comfortable. The pads um, aren't quite as wide as on the 600. It's got a bit of a larger interior area and the driver seems to be angled, which is a, a trend that we're seeing more and more these days. On the bottom, you have got a detachable cable and it's on, a, bizarrely, a 2.5 mil TRRS. So that has possibly got the potential to be wired up as balanced, even though there isn't a balanced cable in the box or any mention of one from Sennheiser. Um, but it's a nice lightweight headphone. It's velour pads. So it's kind of easy on the ears. It's nice and warm without being too sweaty. Uh, the clamping force is fairly significant you will know uh, that you've got them on but as it is a plastic build i do expect that to give slightly as they um as they wear in uh it metal grill on the back um but yes the rest of the construction does seem to be plastic but hence very light the headband has got the normal notch in the center and it's a brilliant design idea it just takes the weight off the center of your head onto the two sides and distributes it a lot more evenly so this should be perfect for longer sessions now let's get it on the analyzer and see how well the frequency response performs. We're also going to compare it to the HD 600. Okay, so let's go and have a look on the graph and I've loaded up to start with the HD 600 frequency response. So you can see here, it's fairly even. Now this is what's called the Harman combined curve. So we're taking into account the gain that the ear naturally has and adding in a bit of bottom end to compensate with what you'd normally feel when you're listening to a set of speakers. So there's stuff that you don't get through your ear. And you can see we're really quite flat coming all the way through here, slight dip down in the treble, but nothing too noticeable. And um, that's an extremely good frequency response. And obviously the bottom end, as people who have used HD600s before will notice, does tail off considerably below that. So let's lay over the HD 400 on the top and you'll see that actually across most of the frequency range here, certainly from 100 hertz up to about 4k, it's lovely and even. The treble is pretty well positioned and actually if you look down here at the bottom end so sub 100 hertz that's a good couple of db up at almost every point and that's exactly what you should see now a, a, a great um, line here would be horizontally going across and that's really where we end up. Now, if I turn off the HD 600, we'll have a look on its own. And that is where this bit just does stick out. And if you're going to make one change to it, or you've got a device with limited EQ functions like the RME ADI 2 DAC, um, just program in to cut this. It is about 5 dB up at this point and you can notice it you really can um, pick this out um, drop that down and this becomes an incredibly good headphone so um, if i then go and uh, add on the eq that i've done for it we then end up with that 
So we've just smoothed that out, taken a little bit here and extended that bass response down. Now you don't quite get the um, effect of the transients, the fast transients on the bass as you do uh, with something like the Order Z LCD range or the planar magnetic headphones, but this is a good even tone and one that's extremely respectable. And if I pop open Fab Filter, you can see the compensation curve that we've got. So it's really not doing too much apart from that bottom end bump and there where we're just taking down that uh, peak. With that down, and you can see we've left the top end completely unadulterated. And actually, this dip here, you can see in the frequency response at about 9k, possibly doesn't exist. Uh, it's what we call a rig artifact, and based on the fact that the ear coupler that we use has got a metal plate on it, and sometimes it seems to have a bit of a reflection and a cancellation at about 9k. So actually, the frequency response probably goes pretty smoothly between those two points there on the graph. But uh, watch the description uh, for the video and you'll be able to pick up all of the EQ points here that I've got. And like I said, if you are limited, just do a bit on the bottom end. So it's that sort of peak at 30 that lifts that up. And then this cut at um, 6.1 and what's that 4250 ish um uh, just taking down that second little bump there and that's the majority of the work here the stereo image on the hd 400 pro is particularly wide and spacious and airy very very similar to the hd 600 and here i've got um the answer to that and it's cross feed so Good Hertz can open a plug-in is obviously one I recommend all the time. I'm running the standard setting with this and no other changes on the session. Uh, if you're running this EQ profile with can opener, then this is really quite a good combination. Obviously, other devices can do cross-feed. If you've got a SPL amp that might have a knob on it, the RME ADI2 DAC has... Um, and there's a few other devices that have got crossfeed, but um, can open the studio. I would recommend this all day, every day, just to nail that presentation and translation to speakers and kind of just rein in the super airiness that it does have in the first place. And if you are comparing this to other headphone reviewers and trying to get an insight and you want to see the raw graph, here is the headphone curve stock of the HD400. Let's overlay the HD600 here in purple over the top of it. And you can see there just where the difference is on that peak and also the increased bass response of the HD400 Pro. As a glasses wearer, I would like to point out that the seal of, for the sub bass doesn't seem to be affected whether I've got the glasses on or off. So that is a good bonus. And realistically, the question now is, are you going to use it with the EQ that I've given you? And if so, um, it does work out quite a bit of a bargain because you do end up with an extremely similar tone and stereo image to the HD 600, that has got to be a real winner for the studio. Admittedly, on its own, the HD 600 is probably the better, more even headphone because it doesn't have that sort of high mid peak in it. But with the EQ, if you want to run this way, you can pick yourself up a good studio bargain. Any other questions, please leave us a comment. Otherwise, we'll see you for another video again soon.